This just into the news desk. Crews are looking into what sparked an overnight fire at a local residence. The home was completely engulfed in flames around 2.30 a.m. Everyone escaped without injury. However, we have just learned the family's total savings was burned in the fire. They weren't trusting of financial institutions and had their life savings hidden in the home. I'm being joined today by Elga Credit Union's success coach, Lori Hawk. And let's ask her some tips about the benefits of having an account at a bank or credit union and find out if they are safe. There might be other folks out there who are afraid to put their money into a financial institution, thinking it might not be safe. Can you help us understand if our money is secure at a financial institution? This is a great question. Many people don't know or understand. When someone has an account at a bank, the insurance fund securing it is the FDIC or the NCUA. When someone has uh, an account at a credit union, the NCA is, NCUA is uh, insuring the account. There are two different insurance funds, but either account, no matter where the money was held, will secure a personal account up to $250,000. So for example, if the bank closed and another bank didn't take that account over, if that account had $1,200 in it, they would still have $1,200 secured by the insurance fund. And if account had $250,000 in it, then the entire $250,000 would be secured through that insurance fund. If somebody had, let's say, $500,000 sitting in an account, only $250,000 of that $500,000 would be secure. So if somebody really had that kind of money, they probably would put $250,000 in two totally different institutions so they could secure the entire lump sum. So this family who had their money in their home has most likely lost it all. I would assume so. Even if their home was insured through an insurance company, it will most likely only be insured for the structure and the contents of the home. So the contents would, would secure their personal belongings, such as their furniture, clothing, things like that. Each person who keeps valuables in their home would want to list these out with their insurance company and have them insured for the amount of the actual contents. But insurance companies don't usually insure cash. If someone wanted to open an account, uh, what would be a best savings or checking account to open? Well, I recommend that everyone have a savings account so they can have somewhere to save their money. But a checking account is good because it's nice for bill paying. Bill money should be in the checking account for expenses being paid out every single month. When someone has a savings account, it's really just used to save the money and maybe use an ATM card or walk into an institution to pull that money right back out. But if someone had a checking account, they could then get a debit card, which could be used everywhere that has the Visa logo. So they could use this account anywhere to get their money. For example, a grocery store, restaurant, movie, clothing stores, things like that. Most people don't write checks anymore or carry much cash. So the debit card is the way people go, but it's still called a checking account. I'm glad you brought up the debit card and the Visa logo. Many people wonder what the difference is between a debit card and a credit card. Can you please elaborate? So with a debit card, you have the actual money in a checking account. So when you use the debit card at a store, it pulled your cash right from your checking account. However, if you used a credit card, that's a loan. You're borrowing the money from that credit card company. Can you give us an example of how borrowing the money from the credit card company works? Yes. So let's say my credit card billing cycle ends on the 10th of the month and the payment is due on the 27th. What would happen is all of the purchases I made before the 10th of the month would be totaled. Let's say I've spent $250. I have until the 27th of the month to pay the $250 in full. If I do, I just owe that $250. I was essentially given a loan for 30 days and have no interest. However, if I don't have the $250 paid by the 27th, two things happen. Number one, I have to pay the minimum payment. A minimum payment on a credit card is usually around 3% of the balance of amounts 1,000 or greater. And if it's less than that, it might be a minimum payment of 20 or $30. So the other thing you should know is that nothing was paid by, if nothing was paid by the 27th, there's probably also going to be a late fee that would affect you. With a lot of institutions, that could be $35 or more. 
In addition to the minimum payment, you'll have to pay the interest on that total balance that's unpaid. So let's say 250 was the balance and we had a minimum payment of $15. About $6.22 of that $15 is all going to interest. So we're really only paying about $8.78 on that $250 balance. If you were only paying $878 toward that $250 debt, that means it would take you almost 29 months to pay off $250. This is two years and four months after paying that $15 for 29 months. If you added that up, $435 is how much you would have paid in for the $250 debt. Wow, that's absolutely shocking. Most people are looking for ways to do their banking in a way that can save them time and, and what convenience products can they get that will save them time? We have great convenience products at Elga Credit Union. We would recommend getting online banking. With online banking, you can do everything from the tip of your fingers at home. In addition to this, we have a mobile app which allows you to do many things. For example, with my mobile app, I can transfer money between my accounts pay other people at that same institution from my phone. I can even take pictures of my personal checks I get and do what I call, or we call at Elga Credit Union, remote deposit capture. All of these things coupled with my debit and credit cards save me time and money.